Hey, I'm Sean. I'm Sterling. This is Rabble, and we're talking Game of Thrones. We're here to talk episode four of season seven, Game of Thrones, The Spoils of War. And honestly, it could not be a better title for this episode. Um, last episode, I thought was one of the best they've ever done. This one might be even better. It's crazy because if you watched my last review, uh, I ended up doing it by myself. This guy wasn't able to be there. But some of the things I complained about in that episode, it's almost like they knew what people were going to have a problem with, and they put it in this episode and addressed it, which always makes the fans and the viewers feel a lot better about where the direction of the story is going. I was disappointed when I found out that this was going to be the shortest episode of Game of Thrones they've ever done. Obviously, when we heard that they were counting down the, the episode count, or dropping the episode count, excuse me, we all wanted all the episodes to be like 90 minute long movies and just full of all these special effects. And admittedly, they can't do that. But the money that they skimped out on in the last episode for the special effects with those lame-ass castles, it, this is where it went. It, it went to this episode went. right here. and You can definitely, definitely tell. Um, just, just a fantastic, quick-moving, exciting piece of television storytelling. Uh, I can't wait to break it down and get into it. So let's jump in. I, think, uh, I guess we'll kind of just follow the, the, the flow of the story. And we'll start in the north with Bran, Mira, and all of them, Sansa, and Starks, and all that kind of stuff. Um, first thing, that Bran and Littlefinger moment, right off the bat, they were they were really pushing and really showing that Caspar dagger in the last couple previews. Mm -hmm. Everybody knew that it was going to be important. You know, we saw Arya with it on her hip, and some of those, uh, those pre-season, mm -hmm. you know, pictures magazine and stuff, covers magazine and covers and stuff. So we knew it was going to be a big deal. I didn't think that we'd get into it right away, but they just jumped right in. The, the conversation with Peter Baelish and Bran, where he, he hands off the dagger, and Bran's like, You know, what are you giving me this for? <laughs> yeah, I'm Bran. You know, um, it's, it's weird, like, knowing that there's a character in the show that knows everything that we know and more, and then Peter Baelish thinks he knows everything, more than everybody else, and he has no freaking clue what he's dealing with now. Mm -hmm. um, but it, it made me wonder something. I don't know if you kind of thought about this, too. When Bran asked, you know, do you know who this belonged to? And blah, 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 blah. And, oh, you know, the, the question of that is what started this whole thing. made you who you are. Like, and then Bran answers with chaos is a ladder, which I don't know if you remember was a famous, like, soliloquy and speech that Baelish had, I think, in season one where he's explaining to Ned Stark, maybe, about like his views about how the kingdom is, is, is run and how power works and how chaos is really what enables somebody like him or somebody like Barris that comes from like really humble beginnings to rise in the society around them. And so obviously for Bran to bring that up, Baelish knows that Bran wasn't there and nobody else was there to hear that, so it definitely has piqued his interest. And now he's probably trying to figure out how Bran knows that. Um, and so it made me wonder, though, like, can Bran recall things at will, or does he just have all this information in his head, and he can only, like, he can only grasp at it when something reminds him of that. It's almost like a distant memory, you know, like, he's like, oh, yeah, I remember you saying something about this, chaos is a ladder, that's kind of what's coming to my mind, is that what happens, or is he just, like, waiting for his time to, like, spring this information? Uh, to answer your question, no, I didn't pick up on him. That, uh, <clears throat> that reference. Uh, <laughs> you didn't pick up on any references. No, but I definitely didn't. I remember hearing the term, but I didn't pick up. If somebody's not getting killed or they aren't like dressed out, one. you're not paying attention to Game of Thrones. Anyways, but um, obviously I, I feel it's opinionated. I took it as more, um, like you said, it's kind of like a memory. Uh, what's the term? It's like a simulation, not simulation, uh, stimulation. stimulation. Stimulation? Yeah. I guess just recall something that jogs his memory at that time to oh, let the yeah. person know. Like something has like, to jog his memory, though, right? I, I, that's what I took it as. Okay. Like, like you I said, think that makes sense. Be, he could just be, you know, all knowing and everything. But I, I think that makes sense, <clears throat> and I think it would explain a lot of why his interaction with Sansa a couple weeks ago went like it did, because he's talking to Sansa. They're at Winterfell, and maybe he's kind of like, oh, yeah, it was a beautiful night. You look mm -hmm. really nice. I'm sorry what happened to you. Because 
it's just like the stuff that's just coming into his head because mm-hmm. obviously he wasn't really there, but <clears throat> you know all these kind of triggers are maybe like sparking stuff, and and then he's just like seeing these slideshow kind of of. So maybe it's one of those things like coming into that conversation, he didn't know Sansa got raped, but because of the the location that they were in and because of their conversation, and she's there, then he's kind of like, oh, I'm like, now I'm understanding more about your journey here or something like that. Okay, yeah, that's what I take it more as. Okay, <clears throat> uh, and I think that explains a little bit of why he acts the way he does, and um, we we saw a little bit of that with Mira coming in after Baelish gets freaked out and can't wait to get the hell out of the room <laughs> Mira comes in and and honestly um it, it, as far as Game of Thrones go that was a pretty sentimental scene to watch and it was pretty it was pretty sad um because Mira's I mean <clears throat> poor girl I mean she's just been put through the ringer yeah I, for anybody that's that's had to like take care of somebody um that has like uh some sort of disability or, or something like that uh those people really do there a lot of their energy, you know, and, and their effort uh, is put into the care of somebody else. And so for her to <clears throat> put her life on the line and see her brother get killed, see her friend Hodor get killed, yeah. Summer killed, basically all in the Three-Eyed Raven, uh, all the children of the forest, <laughs> yeah. all these people it, don't even forget, like, um, Asha, you know, protecting Rickon and Bran, you know, all these people that have been put in yeah. danger to protect Bran throughout the entire course of the series, really. I mean, they even talked about Catelyn Stark that had to fight off an assassin at the yeah. very beginning of the show. Yeah. All these people had basically been putting their lives on the line, and a lot of them losing their lives, to get Bran to the point that he is now where he has all of this information downloaded. And then to have that, and he's become a person that basically has like no sense of empathy or <clears throat> gratitude, has got to be... Insulting, I think, yeah, at the least. It's a huge slap in the face. More of a slap in the face. Than it's like a kick in the balls and a slap in the face at the same, he same didn't time. he say, like, thank you initially. She has a, you know... No, like, it was like a prompted like, thank what, you. What was, it was... I guess you don't need me anymore. So, you know, she, like, kind of throws it out there. He's like, yeah, no, I don't. Yeah, no, I don't, like, yeah. Oh, okay. And it's, he's not lying. <laughs> yeah. But it's just... Don't say that. He didn't elaborate on it at all. It's just no, I don't. No, nope. not like no. Nope. Thank you so much. No, I don't. Was, uh, she Thanks. Was, yeah, See you later. She was like, you know, thank you. He's like, thank you. That was it. Like, no, you're right. Just really cold. It it was it was <clears throat> tough. Um, but we do get a little bit of of I think like a, a like fleshing out that scenario because Mira has a line where she says, "You died in that cave." Mm-hmm. Like Bran isn't. He's not Bran anymore, yeah. and I think in his mind, he's not Bran anymore. He's almost just like a vessel for, <clears throat> excuse me, just a vessel for all of this this information mm-hmm. and this <clears throat> historical context that he has, and this all knowing omnipotence of everything that's gone on around him. But it's still hard because there are people around him that love and care for him, mm-hmm. and they don't get that. I I think a lot of people really had a problem with the way Bran was portrayed in the first couple of episodes of this season. They felt like his change kind of came out of nowhere. And I know people, I think somebody, I you know, I, I pay attention to a couple of videos here and there, and somebody brought up that, well, he didn't act like that with Uncle Benjen, the guy that saved them mm-hmm. from the White Walkers after they get flushed out of the, like the underground mm-hmm. cave or whatever. <clears throat> I don't really remember, um, but maybe it's one of those things where he got all that kind of. Gonna have to cut that out. Um, maybe it's one of the... why are you so serious? <laughs> Just Just he, uh, it's one of those things where you know he got all that information downloaded into him, and then maybe like the longer it kind of set, the more it took over his personality and all the emotional ability that he had. Like he doesn't have room for that anymore. It's all data. It's just all data up here. Yeah, because the previous uh, Three-Eyed Raven, he, I don't remember how his personality was. Obviously, he was an old I, dude. He was, like, like stern, yeah, he older, seemed, but he didn't seem like he was completely emotionally yeah, detached. So, but maybe it's just how he reacted to it. Well, right. And obviously, <laughs> Bran didn't, we, we forget, like, Bran didn't become the Three-Eyed Raven in the way he was supposed to. It yeah, was like an emergency uh-huh. data dump, just poured all this information into him. So I guess it makes sense that he didn't come out of it completely 
Okay, jumping into it with Littlefinger, I do want to touch on this. Um, should should Littlefinger leave? Like, at what point is he gonna realize maybe it's better for me if like, I'm not here anymore? You mean like as fear for his own safety? Yeah, or, I mean, he he I, thinks he's too. I guess he thinks like he's so clever he can think his way out of anything. I guess so. No, I think Littlefinger definitely does suffer from like an arrogance of intelligence. Like he mm. just thinks, "Oh, like I'm smarter than everybody else in the room." Yeah. But he's got to be picking up on some clues here. Like one, Sans is not buying it anymore. Mm-hmm. Brienne <laughs> clearly does not <laughs> approve. Yeah, she is not. Approved. Um, he has the men advantage, mm. but all the rest of the houses in that area are not pledged to yeah. House Aaron, pledged yeah. to Stark. Sorry. Um, and then, you know, now he's got Bran walking around and saying some crazy shit. Like, how did you know the chaos is a ladder thing? And they didn't have time to get into it. Arya shows up and is a complete, like, ninja. Mm -hmm. And then gives him, like, one of the coldest stares we've seen. So, at what point does Littlefinger think, you know, maybe I should just not, I don't need to be here anymore. Like, it's not working out for me. Cut your losses. Get out while you can. And... Not that I want him to. I mean, John doesn't like him. Oh, yeah, I was going to say him and John. I don't, I don't want Littlefinger to get away, but you would think for the sake of the character, he would know when maybe the time is not now. Yeah, but like... <clears throat> and, but, but we also don't know what he's doing either. That's so very true. Maybe he's... Maybe it's all going according to plan. Or maybe he's just really that creepy. Like, maybe when it comes down to it, Littlefinger in this, in this version is really just like... Thinks he's just really helping out he's just that creepy uncle that you just can't get rid of and he just really thinks that he's really helping you i don't i'm just i just want to know what that was a great that was a great response yeah <laughs> I, just, I don't <laughs> he just he's always just there just watching and like you said it's just real creepy and he doesn't have a top lip it all just kind of blooms like well, he from just, nose he just to stays the bottom lip it's like in the meetings and stuff he's not even like with everybody else he's there just like Everyone's like here. He's what does like he do when he's not? Yeah, like, when he's not walking around with them, like, does he read? I don't know. What's he doing? I guess figuring out his next move. I don't know. Anyway, he's just there. Um, so Brandon Littlefinger got there a moment at the beginning. The other key mirror leaves. Mm-hmm. The other key moment here is obviously Arya making it back to Winterfell. Yes. Something I did not think we'd see. If you ask me. Season two or three of the show. Is Arya ever making it back to Winterfell? No. Like, not a chance. No, no. Didn't think it was going to happen. Mm-hmm. Um, kind of wasn't... Sh- I guess we knew it was going to happen because they had all those those preview photos with them all together. But, you know, still, I, I guess it's Game of Thrones. Like, you kind of keep expecting something bad to happen. And she's just... Not going to make it. Not necessarily she's going to die, but something, or she's going to get there and they're gone or something. It's it's uh, it's kind of getting to that point where, like, stuff is getting too good to be true and I'm kind of waiting on somebody to die or somebody to betray somebody or somebody's head to get yeah, smashed together. Yeah, still got three episodes. No, we do. This season alone, We do. So. We do. Um, but, you know, when you look at it, all the Stark kids besides Rickon... Or okay, and he didn't deserve to live anyway. I mean, if you can't run in a zigzag, you don't deserve to be there. Every like everything that they all went through, Rickon was like taken care of, and yeah. then when it came down to it, couldn't run in a fucking zigzag. John fighting White Walkers and climbing walls and getting stabbed to death. Sansa's getting like raped and brutalized and like married off to this and that. Arya's becoming like an assassin and dodging people and traveling with the hound. Rickon can't run the zigzag. That being said, you know, when she got there, she got to Winterfell, she, you know, she walked the thing with the guards. That was cute, you know. Started to go on a little bit too long. I was kind of like, let's pick this up a little bit. Just kick him in the nuts, keep walking. I thought she was going to leave. When she was sitting down mm-hmm. inside the, the court, the courtyard, and she was like looking at everything. She had had that that moment with Nymeria a couple of episodes ago, where she, you know, it kind of recalled like the this is not this that's not me, like mm-hmm. that conversation she had with with Ned in season one. Mm-hmm. And I was starting to think, you know, maybe she kind of feels like I am no one now. Like I'm not a Stark anymore. 
I shouldn't be here. I don't deserve to have a family. I can't connect with these people anymore because she was acting really weird with Hot Pie. And I, I really thought yeah. they were going to go get Sansa, and when they come back, she's going to be gone. Okay. And we're going to miss that reunion. It's mm-hmm. not going to happen. I, I fully expected, and I was really surprised and really happy when it did. And I mean, what did you think of their, her and Sansa coming back together? Um, I thought it was nice, like, her, uh, Sansa and John's, the fact that, obviously, she seems to be, I hate it, but the least liked of the siblings. <laughs> uh, yeah, and the fact that, like, John was actually, like, genuine, genuine, <clears throat> Happy to see her. <laughs> and the fact that they were never close is obviously they're on opposite well, spectrums. Well, was terrible to him. Yeah. Like, as she said, she admitted. But, like, yeah. as far as uh, the sister, they're just, you know, straight tomboy, straight, you know, just complete opposite and them. Do you remember what they were like in season one? I know, obviously, they were very opposite. And they had the whole, like, I'm the big sister, you're a little sister. Did, but did they... Did they like? I guess like play they were so young, though. It's kind of like, of course, they disliked each other because you just at that age where you don't get along with your siblings. I don't think Sansa like any of them, though. It, it is weird that Sansa is the one that's gotten to, you know, reconnect with all these people, and mm-hmm. she no like nobody likes you for good reason because yeah. she was terrible. But I feel like they realized like we were kids then. Oh, for I, sure. I, just, I mean, yeah, they're adults like, now. There's yeah, perspective. They're they're very, they've been through things. How are they supposed to be in the books right now? Who knows? Uh, like, 15. Oh, okay. I mean, I think Rob is about 16 when he's killed. Oh, um, okay. And so he and John are, like, the same age. I think Rob's, like, a couple months older than him. Okay. And then Sansa... I, I don't know. Okay. I don't, I'm, let me stop. I don't know. But not... I think... I like, Somebody tell me. I'm I like sure her character in the film as she's like, you know, realized when John, I was horrible to you. Right. Obviously, she knows her and Arya weren't, you know, super close. Mm-hmm. But like, I, when you asked when they were younger, I feel like the only thing I remember her mentioning is like, I just want to get married, you know, and have have my kids. Yeah. Basically, no, I know I'm going to be married off to Joffrey. I feel like mm-hmm. that's all like she would talk about. She embraced that mm-hmm. life that obviously Arya didn't. Mm-hmm. And so I think there was still like a hint of like, oh, you still think you're a badass? When she was like, yeah, it's a list of people I'm going to kill. She's yeah. kind of like, oh, that's cute. You yeah. Know? <laughs> yeah, she literally laughs in her face. Yeah, like, she's kind of like, oh, that, you know, oh, you're still... And then she didn't realize still doing until that. after uh, <laughs> Bran was like, the list, she was like, oh, you're serious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. when Bran's when like, yeah, the, she's on the uh, list, like, yeah. don't you know? Yeah. She's like, oh, yeah, I do know. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. so... As far as... Um, uh, there's the reunion... Um, Embrace. I just thought. I guess I was happier that I just felt like it was more real than I thought. Like I said, they were on completely just different spectrums, and I thought it was nice they hugged. I think twice. Yeah. And you know, talked about their dad and everything. So it was just. It was a nice moment, and we don't get a lot of those nice moments in a show like this. <laughs> when Ari and Bran got reunited, are they the first Stark kids? to get reunited that actually liked each other? Did they like each other? Did they talk in season I don't, one? I don't know how any... Season one's always been a long time ago, and like you said, they were kids, so I feel like... That's just different, but we I don't, don't remember I guess any, we don't know, because they were literally only together for episode one. Yeah, I feel like the only ones I know who were cool, I feel like were Rob and John, and I feel like... Rob and John were cool, and but John it was liked, weird John because... John and Arya liked each other. Right. And they liked each other because they were kind of like the outcast. Yeah. Bran and Rickon liked Rob and John because they're like, those are my older brothers. Brother, yeah. I, I never got the sense that like Rob and Sansa were close. Me either. I think it's just kind of like, I'm your older brother, I'm the older sister. But we, we know that Sansa was actively antagonistic to John. You can almost even say maybe Sansa was the outcast. The fact like, it didn't seem like... She probably made herself outcasted, but it didn't seem like... Maybe amongst the kids, but not amongst the family. Well, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think it's interesting because, you know, John... This is a tangent, but John and Rob, I think it was, like, one of those things, like, we want to be really close, but the whole, like, you're a bastard mm-hmm. and my mom hates you, it's weird. Like, how do, how close can I be to you? Because mm-hmm. Until she I'm starts, got, yeah. Right. So, you know, Ari and Brian getting together, him giving her the knife, 
the, he definitely has a purpose for that. Uh, um, it's funny how he gave it to him, just like, like this for you. It's wasted on a cripple. <laughs> and then when uh, he hugs uh, Arya, he's just looking at Sansa. Just oh, that was creepy. Yeah, I didn't like that. No, I didn't like that. Nah, I didn't like that at all. He's just like, <laughs> yeah, no, it was almost like this is the sister I really like. Just in case you were wondering. <laughs> I like her. I See, don't, I don't, really I don't like remember you. their relationship. It's almost like, yeah, I mentioned that rape thing on purpose. Mm. I don't like, but like you said, it was only like one episode. So. Right. And then we we got to talk about Brienne versus Arya. Mm-hmm. Best fight on the show? Like, best one-on-one? Well, the Hound and Brienne was pretty good. It's definitely up there, I would say. I think in terms of like, Sword play choreography mm-hmm. gotta be the best. Like, what else would it really oh, top see. that? Hound. Because that was such yeah. like a drag out. That was a nasty uh-huh. fight. Yeah, you know, I don't really yeah. want to go back and watch uh-huh. that one. That's completely. But this different. one, I think it was just nice with the different styles as well. For sure. Uh-huh. But it was like when LeBron like finally got into the NBA, and then you were like, oh, like he's really the real deal. That was what it was like watching Ari. Like, we've been hearing about it. We've seen, like, little bitty glimpses here and there. Like, we know she's a badass, but can she fight? Because we know she beat the Waif. Mm-hmm. But we didn't see it. Yeah. And she beat her in the dark. So it's kind of like, did she have to use, like, some tricks to get her? Mm-hmm. Man, seeing her, like, flipping that sword around and working mm-hmm. that dagger, man, that thing was freaking, that was nice. She just, like, had it behind her back or something. Oh, man. Just... Oh, man. It was, it was sweet, man. And if, if we get more of that... Arya, mm-hmm. live or die, like she she's the one. She is the one. And you know what else was really cool? I started thinking about, you know, obviously Brienne's gonna be surprised because Arya's very small and she's young, and Brienne's kind of like, where'd you learn how to do all this kind of stuff? Mm-hmm. Because that's not a style that's popular in Westeros. Mm-hmm. Those are two women in this world that are going against the grain yeah. of what women are supposed to be. But for them to meet up and to have a moment where they're Getting to spar against another capable combatant that's mm-hmm. also a woman has got to be a big moment for those characters. Because who else has Brienne ever fought that's a woman that can hold her own in a combat situation? Arya has dealt with the wave and stuff like that, but it's still like a sense of validation for her because she's like, you beat the hell. Like, I know you're legit because I fought next to him. Like, I've seen him work. Mm-hmm. That was got to be a cool moment for those those characters. And it was like, you felt good for them. And that worries me because we got a lot of good moments in this episode. So some yeah. shit's going down, like people losing hands. It's not gonna be I'm like I'm gonna be uncomfortable the entire rest of the season. Like more uncomfortable than usual watching Game of Thrones because we can't have this many good things in one episode. Mm-hmm. I can totally get that. Like I'm my soul, my spirit doesn't feel right. <laughs> like I'm I'm nervous. I'm nervous, bro. I'm nervous. Like it, it got to the point where like because of the good stuff that happened in this past episode. Seeing Danny and, and, and later in the episode, mm-hmm. I was like, something's gonna happen. Like, I don't like this. Like, bro, I was working, like, he's uh-huh. like, Amy, I was like, uh uh-uh, uh, he's going down, it's <laughs> over because we got too much good stuff. Like, Jamie's gonna die. It's, yeah, I'm, we, we I'm can't have nice things in, in Westeros. I'm upset about that. So, and, and I think that's good. I mean, let's talk about what's going on down south. We got a little bit of Cersei talking to the bank. Yeah. But nothing worth really talking about. I mean, she's talking to the bank. He seems convinced they're going to back her when they get the gold. Mm-hmm. We know that they got the gold mm-hmm. because it got to King's Landing ahead of the rest of the train. They're bringing it. What they're bringing in now is like a little bit of leftover gold because he had some to pay Braun. And then like the grain and the supplies. Okay. So bef- before we get real into the battle, we got to talk about the moments on Dragonstone. Yeah. Some good moments. Yeah, no, for sure. Once again, we got too many good moments. Like, <laughs> uncomfortable. Um, really, the only thing we're talking about here is is John and Danny in the caves, where he's showing her the dragon glass. We saw all those like old cave paintings and stuff like that of those weird spirals and, and those symbols that the children of the forest mm-hmm. made way back. Men, the first men, and then okay, now. Uh, a lot of people were really impressed with seeing the White Walkers on the wall. Mm. I thought it was too on the nose. Of like, accuracy? Yes. It was like like the, the main four White Walkers we've seen the entire season. Like, 
I guess they're immortal or something. I, I mean, I, I know that they can't be killed by no, normal means. But seriously, it was like they posed. It was like the Beatles of the White Walkers. Like those four, like the Night King and the other three guys walking around. I don't know. It was too... Oh, that's nitpicking, but okay. It, I, no, it is nitpicking. It's just like they, they took the time to... I don't know. I don't know. It just... I get where you're it going seemed from, like too fresh for me. And, and, and let's just get this out the way. John and Danny gonna fuck. It's looking that way, yeah. Uh, um, looking that way. Boy, I don't see incest as something that doesn't... Oh, I doesn't, forgot about that. Yeah. But, but you the, know, but in terms of Game people, of Thrones, though... A lot of people were saying, like... This is, like, barely incest. Well, that's hand? a lot of people... Do. Yeah. I mean, they are Targaryens. That's how they get yeah, down. That's of, yeah, that's a lot of people, like, it, it don't matter. In fact, that's how True. I keep probably even... More. And unlike Cersei and Jamie, they didn't get raised like right next to each other the whole time. And they're not twins. Mm-hmm. It's also just nasty. You can just see how they look at each other too. <laughs> oh Dav- no, they uh, Davos. It's like yeah, no, well, you know, yeah, you, yeah, you know, Davos <laughs> wasn't on. Uh, he's like the best character. If they don't have like very many black people in Game of Thrones, <laughs> so Davos like fills in for black people in Game of Thrones. Oh god. No, nah, he's. Oh, I can see it. He's the blackest one. I mean, like, Grey Worm is, he's Grey Worm. Like, he doesn't count. He doesn't count. Yeah. Missande is, you know, she's, like, cool, sexy, smart, you know, mm-hmm. okay. black chick. Davos but Davos is, Davos like, Ron. because whatever happened to that pirate? Remember that pirate from, like, season one, two, or three, Salador sign? He was friends with Davos, wasn't he? Oh yeah 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 yeah. What happened to that dude? I don't know. Maybe Man. he'll pop back up. Probably not. <laughs> Shoot. They probably the creators probably forgot about him. Boy. Yeah, I remember that dude. Yeah. I don't know. I really that was like was. the only one, right? Has there ever been another black guy in Game of Thrones? Somebody probably got killed. Oh, that dude that uh what's his name? The Danny was he was trying to get Danny to, to marry him and she locked him in that vault. And she took all his oh, money. Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. cheated on him with that, uh, yeah. with that servant. Yeah. That dude was black. Yeah, the black dude was Yeah, was that cheating. city. Yeah, he was shady and cheating. Yeah, I completely forgot about that guy. Yeah. Oh, and the black dude got stabbed in the back when uh, the Sand Snakes killed all the people in Dorne. That dude was black. Was he a guard or something? Yep, yeah, he was a guard. You know they love black guards. If you're a rich dude in an old timey <laughs> in an old timey movie, get you a black guard. They're gonna die first, but you'll get captured. But they but they big. <laughs> get your black guard. Look very That's threatening. when you know you've made it when you got a black guard. Anyway, tangent. Um they gonna bone, they gonna do it. What what's the they gonna do it this year or next season? I'll say maybe by the end of this year. What, Yeah, maybe like season finale. You know what? Here's what's going to happen. I'm going to tell you what's going to happen. They're going to beat Cersei. They're going to be celebrating. She's going to be like, fight for me. Or whatever. No, He's going to be like, we got to get the White Walkers or whatever. She's like, when you bend that knee. It's like, he going to bend that knee, all right. <laughs> <laughs> Just like he bent the knee for old, uh, what's up, old girl, Egret. Oh, oh he going to bend the knee. He gonna bend that knee. Hopefully, it doesn't get dragged on as long. Well, if we saw that much of Masande and Grey Worm, it's gonna be like a good ten minute love scene with John and Danny. Weren't people complaining about that scene? I feel like they wouldn't drag it on that long. Oh no, I don't think they care. They don't care. What we think because we're gonna watch. Come on, yeah, no, totally, no. Nah, they'll definitely draw it out. Um, I think by the end of this season, the season finale. Now, so you think they're gonna be Cersei though? And then oh, it would yeah. just, just be them versus... I mean, do you think there's a possibility that story-wise Cersei's going to win this? Oh, no wait, maybe not now. She was I looking, mean, she was looking I, good before. The, the only thing about it is, while Danny's arrogant, Cersei's crazy. Yeah. And yeah, eventually yeah. crazy catches up to you. You know? I mean, there are a lot of people that say Hitler should have won World War II, but he's crazy. You do stupid shit when you're crazy. You know, like, you, when you have all insanity and, like, all this rage and hate, you know, you don't think straight. I mean, even the possibility, like, Jamie not making or getting captured. Oh, does she care enough about Jamie for that to bother her anymore? 
Does she care enough about anybody? I don't know. I don't think so. Yeah. She didn't have any kids left. left. Yeah. So there's almost nothing to live for. Jamie, I feel like she just using them. Yeah. Poor Jamie. Um, yeah. I don't know. I don't know. He's just this season. He's just been. I don't know. I feel bad for him. Yeah. The whole hand and uh, oh dude, it's like how does she like it? <laughs> oh yeah, man. He yeah, he's got it rough. Yeah. Jamie's been disrespected this season. Yeah, he has. Ever since he lost that hand, he really hasn't gotten a lot of respect. Then uh, trying to be, I guess, nice, giving old girl the poison to not. Uh, that was a mistake. Yeah. <laughs> that's why you can't have nice. That's why you can't be nice in West yeah. Rose because the one old lady that you treat with some respect happened to kill your son. All right. Had a rough time. Uh, shout out to Danny for calling Tyrion on the family shit. Tyrion, <laughs> I'm I'm gonna try to find a picture of his face when she's like, "Our enemies, your family." He's just like. <laughs> I'm sure it's some memes, some memes, some places. Oh, somewhere. Yeah. Somewhere, bro. I mean, and she's right, though. I mean, Tyrion's been held back a little bit by his, his love for Jamie. Oh, for Jamie. I mm-hmm. doubt that he has any love left for Cersei. No. But for Jamie, and just maybe a little bit of his family name, I guess, because he knows that when they wipe out the Jamie and Cersei, mm-hmm. that's also the end of the Lannisters. There's nobody left. Yeah. In the books, there's some side families floating around, but I don't think there's anybody left in Game of Thrones that would count as, as a Lannister. I mean, okay. Tywin's so brother is dead, his son is dead, and he was a sparrow anyway, so it doesn't matter. Um, this is it, and he knows that, and I, he's still got a soft spot, for, soft spot for Jamie. They left things on good terms in the TV show. Not so in the books. And I think part of him still feels like if he was able to get to Jamie, he could kind of talk him Yeah. at least down from supporting Cersei. I I think he actually could if you know I don't if. think I don't think he could, but I think You don't think Jamie I think will turn? Tyrion no, I or... think Tyrion thinks he can though. Jamie will turn when Cersei goes full Mad Queen and tries to blow up King's Landing. That's when he'll he'll choose honor. Because the most ironic thing about Jamie's story is that everyone talks about what little honor he has, and he sacrificed his reputation mm-hmm. to save an entire city of people, and nobody knows it. Mm-hmm. So, and then he kind of like leaned full into, well, I'm just Jamie Lannister, I do whatever the hell I want, I don't care about honor, mm-hmm. because, I mean, it's taken from him. He can't, he can't gain it back because nobody believes mm-hmm. him. Um... And so I think, you know, Cersei will, when she doesn't have any more cards to play, she's just going to take everybody with her, and I think he'll do the right thing then. And then I think he'll probably kill himself. If he makes it that, that long. If he makes it that long. Yeah. Dude's not looking too good right now. No. Uh, how did he get there? Well, it, it's interesting, because uh, Danny's like, F your plans. I'm sick of this mess. Mm-hmm. But before that, boy, you know, I really thought... <laughs> I really thought she was just going to take off. And so, like, by herself. Oh, okay. I, be, Not take, so when they're, like, in the field, and then Bron's like, you hear that? I got my legless ears on today. I don't know how I heard it before everybody else, but I'm Bron. Um, he was, like, legless in this. I was just watching Lord of the Rings this week. So it was yeah, he kind of was. <laughs> but he was just, like, I'm, like, jumping up, jumping off horses, and I'm running through fire. Uh-huh. and Taking other people's weapons. <laughs> Shooting dudes with, yeah, with bolts. Is, yeah. That bolt should have gone right through that dude. I don't even think it should have pinned him like that. I think it should have just like... Just kept going. Yeah, that thing was huge. Yeah, um, I thought like that was a waste, but whatever. But when he heard it, I thought it was gonna he was going to hear Danny like, on the dragon. Okay. So when I heard all the, the thunder and uh-huh. the hooves and everything like that, I was like, oh, good. She's finally using that big-ass army that she Brought worked all this... Across the world. Six yeah. seasons to... Uh-huh fulfill and she's like oh she's actually gonna break him out since she didn't give him to any Tyrells or Dornish people to use but then it gets stupid because in reality she didn't need to risk Drogon or herself at all because the Dothraki were gonna win that anyway yeah um she had to make a statement she had, yeah you're yeah, right and, like, and that's and what it was like you said just arrogance for everything good and positive that Danny is her biggest fault is her arrogance and then John even warned her when she asked him. He was like, if you do it, you're going to be no better than anybody else. 
you know, previous. You used the dragons just to go. No, that well, he's he was more talking, talking about if you're like city, burning the yeah, city, city, yeah. And I so I, I think she does listen to him because she's like, well, I'll take out the army instead of the city, I'll take out the army. Obviously, she doesn't know about, or she didn't know about the scorpions, the big uh-huh. crossbows. Yeah. But it's still one of those things. It's like, you're going to win the, the battle anyway. Like, after the battle's over, land in with the dragon. Is it is it worth it? I think there's a part of Danny like, she likes it. She likes it, dude. She likes being on the dragon. She likes, she likes burning people. Like, she likes being the one to... Give that order. I think she does, man. I think there's a part of like, like people, other people in the series have said she's, she's not a ruler. She's a conqueror. And when she's not conquering, she doesn't feel like she's doing anything. She's not getting any sense of like accomplishment from it. And so you know they they definitely caught them by surprise. But and and I'm I'm nitpicking here. There are some stupid things that she does. Like one, she doesn't think the arrows are gonna do anything, and they don't because he just kind of like turns his back up and they bounce off the scales, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, but she didn't see the big old bolt from Braun coming right toward her. I don't. It look, I thought it looked like she was trying to pull him up out of it, and that's because it looked like it was almost head essentially. I feel like she didn't move him at all. Oh, it looked like it was almost kind of head essentially, and mm-hmm. I guess maybe it was just the shot just carried. I don't know. Maybe it looked like you know. In the but movie. it was like one of those things like she didn't even like try to angle him up to where like the rough side of his scales blocked it because it hit him right in the shoulder. Mm-hmm. So maybe, I guess I'll need to watch it again. But it, it was kind of one of those things where it was like, okay, if you thought the arrow, if you accounted for the arrows, you didn't account for that big old spear coming through the air. I didn't think she used the cloud cover well. I thought she easily could have flown up into the cloud. And the other thing that was stupid, right? Yeah. She saw him. Uh, what's going on? She saw Braun aiming it at her, and she just like flew right toward him. It was almost like yeah. a game of chicken, yeah. which, you know, her arrogance, I guess. Yeah. And she but, saw, you know, the, the one he missed, so she knew, like... She, so, he shot one that, that missed? Yeah. Oh, that was like the, the... Was that the second or third? That was the second one he shot. She sh- He shot the first one and missed. Oh, did he? Yeah. Oh, I didn't remember that. You know, the first one he shot the mm-hmm. uh, Thraki, then he mm-hmm. shot another one missed. Okay. Then he shot and hit him in the shoulder. I didn't remember so that. So she knew, like, all right, somebody's shooting something like me. Oh, okay. Did not remember that. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Well, see, and that's one of those other things I'm saying. Like, she didn't use the cloud cover. That, that bow can... A, can angle upward, but I would think at a certain point it can't go any straight, more straight up. Mm-hmm. She could have just risen up into the clouds where he loses her, he can't see her, and then basically like dive bombed in right on him. You know, I just didn't feel like she used him well. If Drogon goes down, can she even ride the other two? Like, we've never seen her. I don't know. They're big enough, but are they trained? Because personally, if it was me, if I'm going into war, but it's like the first battle, I'm not going to risk my best yeah, dragon. I know she, yeah, she went, yeah. Why not go with one of the smaller ones uh-huh. that is not as powerful. This may be the dumbest thing that she did. Why did you burn all the supplies? I don't know. You you're, clearly winning see the, yeah. you're winning the... Like, she was spinning over dudes. Mm-hmm. And it's like, burn the supplies, <laughs> burn the supplies. It's like, what do you do? You she were just complaining. Too. You were just complaining about the fact that y'all didn't have any food yeah. or any grain or any supplies or any gold. And you burned all of it. All you needed to do was burn the, burn the men. And it's you're home free, so it's what, like she's gonna win the battle, but at what cost? Like you didn't gain nearly as much as you, you made a statement. That's it. You yeah, got a statement. You got a burning her, statement. Her flaws, just like any other character. This should have been the moment for Daenerys, and really, Bronn and and Jamie stole the entire scene. I thought because we saw Jamie get to be like a leader, you know that hero's charge. Where he's like, I'm not abandoning my army. Stupid, but noble. Yeah. Bron told him to leave before they even, you know. Yeah. Okay. And I think Bron said that because Bron wanted to like, well, I'll go with you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to take, take my gold. And... Yeah, man. And he was really looking at that gold when he dropped the suit. Oh, he did. Yeah. He was like, I mm. thought, you know, I thought we were going to lose Bron in this episode too. I, I thought he was going to be like looking at the gold and he was going to like reach for it and it. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah. I thought yeah. it was, yeah, was going to happen. Um, So, was kind of surprised to see him make it through. This episode, Jamie, with that charge, and, and as, as soon as he, he picked up spirit, because we saw that in the trailer for the season, and I'm trying to think, man, do any other scenes in that trailer with Jamie in it that hasn't happened yet? Is this it for him? You know, so the whole time he's like riding the horse, I'm trying to think, man, did I see any? Why did he just throw it? Because that would have made too much sense. Oh, okay, I guess. 
Because it's like, the dragon wasn't dead, so you know it's still alive. So I don't know why he didn't, like, he could just turn his neck. I don't know. <laughs> and he was, like, right there. It's just like, I don't know. I, don't know. I thought he was going to throw it originally. You, you know, um, somebody, a uh, friend of mine I was talking to, they thought that Jamie wasn't even going to get as close as he did. <laughs> They thought that Drogon's tail was just going to come out of nowhere and just be like, whap. <laughs> Which would have been hilarious. <laughs> if he was just like charging, like slow motion, just like. <laughs> Danny, I mean, your dragon gets hit in the shoulder, you burn the scorpion, and you land right in the middle of the battle. You're winning. The, you're winning. Just fly know. back over onto the hill or something. Because at first, yeah, I, didn't think, I didn't think he was still going to be able to fly with it, but he was she, doing. She got him. Yeah. Landed easily, yeah. but no, still, was, you couldn't yeah. like. He, he, he would have done well right in the middle, to... and then you got off the dragon. <laughs> to try to pull out the try to pull out that big ass spear. Oh, that was the equivalent spear. of <laughs> if you're like Texas Motor Speedway or like the Indy 500, mm. and you blow a tire and you stop in the middle of the race and get out and start trying to change the tire by yourself. Is it arrogance? Is it stupidity? Is it naivety? It's just, just what we needed for that cool shot of Jamie charging the dragon. I mean, that's like the most iconic thing in, in fantasy storytelling anyway. The knight that's been like battered in battle mm. and he's making that last charge at the dragon, you know. But yeah. was it worth the unrealistic notion of her landing Drogon? The scene did look amazing in this episode. No, it did. Yeah. No, it, it did. Um, just the whole army's coming. So, you know, Jamie's floating <clears throat> off to the bottom of this river, mm -hmm. weighed down by all this armor and this golden hand that he can't use. Um, I don't think it's over for him. I feel like a lot of people are like, is Jamie dead? No, Jamie's not dead. Jamie's not dying like that. He just, like, gets washed down river. We'll just see him later on. Or Maybe I hadn't thought about that. Or, I, I just assume that he'll like be a captive. Yeah, I assume he'll be a captive. I'm thinking more of he won't, like, he won't. He's not going to die. I don't think... I'm not like that. I don't know. I feel like she'd just be like, oh, forget him there. We can't find... Or something like that. I don't know. Nah, he might get washed down river. Yeah, or that's what I'm thinking. Yeah, like, I can I see that. Because I'm still... The second time I watched it, it looked like Ron is the one who uh, tackled him. Mm -hmm. But I still don't... That's what, like I said, looked like. Yeah, maybe. This, it, it seemed like... You know, they were floating too, so... Or he was well, we just see We just see Jamie sinking. We didn't see Braun sink. Well... When I watch it again, and I'm say, it is Braun that knocks him off, not Dickon, right? And I'm glad that Braun laughed at that stupid ass name. Why would you name your son Dickon? Like I said, the first time I watched, it, I thought it was Dickon, but the second time it looked like Braun. But you saw it didn't look like he was swimming. The other, the other body, it looked like they were uh, singing as well. Oh, were they? I guess you, I you, you it see again. a far shot first, and then it goes like Jamie just sinking. Oh, does it? Well, I'm thinking oh. he's sinking faster just because of the armor. Yeah, probably. Yeah, because I don't. Think and I mean, Ron there's a dragon him. right up toward the top, so you probably don't want to not sink. Yeah. You know, uh, so, float, I guess. Is the but yeah, it didn't look like they were doing anything, so I'm assuming they're both just be washed down river. All right, so where do we think the story's going from here? Now, right off the bat, based on the end of this episode, how is Danny going to account for the scorpions? No one hurts, she won't. <laughs> uh, maybe just be more careful flying. I don't know. Doesn't sound like the nearest to me. Yeah, I don't think she will. Um, yeah, I don't think. It, yeah, I don't think she will. I mean, it could be one of those things where, when you go into the battle, like you have a specific battalion or something whose sole purpose is basically to locate where the scorpions are and take them out, and then fly the dragons in. I guess if you had other dragon riders, you could kind of come at them from different sides, so they're mm -hmm. not able to. But like I said, I think the obvious ep the obvious counter is fly up high, try to use cloud cover. Or basically get to an angle where the scorpion can't shoot almost straight up and then just drop straight down. You know? That would end the series too fast. Do you th so what is going to be Cersei's response? Because she loses the grain, so they're definitely going to be hungry. But they have the gold, so they're paid back for the Iron Bank. Mm -hmm. Was that their... Now they left like their crappier army that the Unsullied took out. But do they have another army besides this one? And that's what Tyrion's point was. Like, we have the bigger army, but, well, they're going to buy the Golden Suns. Golden Suns, I think, yeah, with sure. the Iron Bank. Uh, and so she is going to have an army. Okay, yeah, sure. 
a, a, a good one. Because all they do is fight. They're almost like the Unsullied. Like, that's what they... They're a mercenary group. Theon showed up. And John was like... You like it. I was really wanted John to go full, like, Ramsey Bolton. I'm punching you until your face doesn't exist anymore. Until some like, the, uh, oh, for pulls, sure. Pulls I thought that's what was going to happen. And I I thought we were going to get a scene of, like, John and the Queen's men were going to be kind of, like, looking at the Greyjoys, like, oh, we're about to scrap him. The Greyjoys be like, we don't like that little... <laughs> <laughs> we don't like him anyway. Yeah, it didn't look like anybody was just about to scrap Nah, they weren't. Yeah. Nah, they weren't. Like, they were like, whatever. We just... We just love his reaction, like, I didn't know you were going to be here. <laughs> Sucks. Now he wants Daenerys to help him get Yara back. Are they gonna swap? I'll give you Yara. You give me Jamie. I wouldn't take that. It's Theon. Who cares what Theon wants? I don't you trash Theon. I just don't think she would. I don't think she would do it. But as you know, as we mentioned, she's a uh, very arrogant. She feels like she could just go do it. Dropping. I think her arrogance is why she wouldn't do it. You think so? Why would she do something for the Greyjoys, for Theon Greyjoy? I feel like if she it meant would... giving up Jaime Lannister, I guess I wouldn't. If she I mean, the them. last time somebody let Jaime Lannister go, it didn't work out well for them. Catelyn yeah. Stark. Are the White Walkers coming through this season? Maybe season finale. We see it season deep. finale. That's kind of what I'm thinking. I don't think of the Starks as having a lot of ships. I don't really know what ship they came on. We know that the Greyjoy fleet doesn't really exist anymore. How are they going to get this dragon glass to Winterfell? They can't go. Uh, they they can't go thing. by land because yeah, that's another thing <laughs> I thought as well. They're on the wrong they side. They only had the one ship that came on. Um, I guess Theon and them have a ship, so. Oh, like, God, Theon, I don't want Theon in the show anymore. Can so, he die? Yeah, I don't know how they're going to get it back either. Varys is. Could he be? Could he be a traitor? Because, you know, maybe that's why Danny was able to get this victory because Varys didn't have time to let somebody know, hey, she's coming. She just was like, here I go. But then at the same time, she had time enough to get the Dothraki on the ships and on the mainland. But maybe Varys didn't have anybody to go out and meet Jamie and tell him they were I don't know, dude. I, I don't he know. Could actually. be, but I feel like that's anybody. Anybody could be a traitor. Oh, I don't think anybody could be a traitor because it's got to be somebody that has intimate knowledge of what their plans are and has to get that information to somebody else that can actually do something about it. Who else but Nisande, Varys, that's it. Jamie, I think, will be fine, at least for the next couple episodes. I don't think he's going to die. I I really am on the, the train that believes that James is going to be the one to kill Cersei. Until he does that, uh-huh. I think that he's all right. Okay. Relatively speaking. Daenerys, she got a victory. I don't think it's I don't think it's a tie though. If we're if we're calling this like a fight, mm. Cersei's taking the first two maybe three rounds. Daenerys won this round, but she's okay, going yeah. she's going to need a knockout to, to win the fight. Yeah, no, she's definitely She's definitely not. Yeah, they're not on level terms right yeah, now. Yeah, no. When's John gonna hop on his dragon? The actual dragon. I'm thinking not Daenerys. I'm not thinking it. Not not anytime soon. Maybe it's got to be soon. This is episode four. We only got seven. You think it's gonna be this season though? Hell yeah. Well, maybe maybe season not. Nine. Maybe not. Well, when, well, yeah. I feel like earliest episode seven. Is John gonna get back to Winterfell in this, this season? season? I don't think so. You don't think so? No. Okay. Is Baelish going to survive this season? I'm going to say yes. I'm going to say... Okay. Maybe mid next season he might be... I think... How many episodes is that next season? Six? Oh, wait. It's six, right? I was thinking I don't eight. think Baelish is going to no, make yeah, it. I was thinking... Obviously, we're not very good at preview what we think is going to happen on the show. Uh, it's late. It's I'm hard. tired, man. It's, hard. Uh, it's great seeing all these characters... Like in one spot, like interacting, uh, you know, seeing Jamie and Daenerys in the same scene, Braun and Tyrion, you know, I'm kind of excited about maybe that potentially, because I really like their dynamic. You know, John and Davos on Dragonstone, I really Davos like been that. MVP these last couple episodes. Yeah, really, John, yeah, Davos, can we get a Davos and Braun spinoff? Yeah, that would be good. And like Tyrion and John spinoff too, and they can kind of do their own thing. Yeah, I really like Davos. Maybe like girl talk with Danny and Masande because they was really about to get into the juicy details of that. 
She was like, ooh, what you mean? <laughs> Lots of things, many things. Uh, what she she said? <laughs> she's like, hold, hold on, girl. So anyway, man, no, nah, it's, uh, it's uh, I, I don't know where this is going, to be honest. And you know, I like that. I'm, I'm, mm. I haven't gone in with the spoilers at all this season. I'm, I'm hoping to stay that way. I felt like an idiot when I was on the way, uh, on the way home the other uh, last night. I accidentally pulled up my news app and it was like articles for Game of Thrones, and I was like, "What are you doing? Like, get thee behind me, <laughs> Game of Thrones spoilers." I don't know, man. Uh, if you have any uh, ideas, have any theories, or you noticed anything in this last episode that we missed and you'd love to tell us about us, hit us up in the comments. You can always tweet me. Uh, I'm on Twitter at Sean, uh, S-E-A-N, underscore at, underscore Rabble. We're Rabble, and be sure to check out the new videos that we have coming at you as soon as possible. Uh, hit like, hit subscribe, and let us know that you like our content. Till then, take care.